Patrick Montgomery was in court. Jonathan Manapa will stay in federal custody. No, I don't take responsibility at all. Everyone, welcome to the show. So 27-year-old Pennsylvania resident Cameron Hess was seen on surveillance video and independent videos. He was forcing his way into the Capitol. Officers were trying to remove some of Trump's terrorists from the building, and he was trying to force his way in at the same time. So Hess was seen in a very densely packed mob outside of the East Rotunda doors when the officers opened the doors to try to eject some of the members of the mob. So officers shot pepper balls toward the mob. They were trying to keep them out, um, and these people were trying to forcibly enter. So Hess put his jacket up over his collar of his jacket, up over his mouth and his nose as he was shoving his way through the crowd. So about six minutes later, the police regain control of the area and they force Hess out and a bunch of other people as well, force them back out of the building. But instead of taking the hint, and instead of leaving, Hess approached the doorway again and he pushed one of the officers. So the officer repeatedly ordered Hess to stop and he was heard on his body cam. But the prosecutor says that Hess was holding the door open with his left arm and, quote, engaged the officer with his right arm. So eventually the police were successful. They re-secured the doors and they broke Hess's grip on the door. But he remained outside the doors for another 10 minutes. And as the Capitol attack was still going on, Hess was sending out text messages and he wrote, quote, People storming the Capitol, and quote, in the thick of it, got pepper sprayed and tear gassed. So later that night, Hess sent another text and he was bragging about his violence. He wrote, quote, I was brawling at the door. And then at some point, reality must have set in because Hess texted, quote, don't tell anyone I was there. So Hess was arrested on March 1st of 2023 after the police contacted him. They, he turned himself in and Hess was indicted on charges of civil disorder, assaulting officers, entering a restricted building or grounds, two counts of disorderly conduct, two counts of physical violence and parading or demonstrating in a Capitol building. So in October of 2023, Hess pleaded guilty to the felony charge of civil disorder. So he faced up to five years in prison, three years of probation and 250,000 in fines. However, the prosecutor requested only one year in prison, two years of probation and 2000 in restitution. Hess wrote in his sentencing memo that he was willing to accept the consequences of his actions, but he asked for only probation because he has a rare immune disease that he suffers from. It's called IPEX. This is a serious disease. It, it affects males only. It can have life-threatening side effects. So, you know, it, I'm not making light of it, but here's my question. What is this guy doing at a huge event like a Trump rally and a siege at the Capitol? And remember, this was during the height of the, co the pandemic. This was during the height of COVID. So he can go to D.C., where he's surrounded by literally tens of thousands of strangers right on top of each other, but he can't go sit in a cell maybe by himself. Yeah, I'm not buying it. I'm not saying he doesn't have the disease. Like I said, I just think it is an awfully convenient excuse to avoid prison. So U.S. District Judge Royce Lamberth presided over Hess case, and he didn't buy that excuse either. When all was said and done, Judge Lamberth sentenced Hess to nine months in prison, three years of probation, and 2,000 in restitution. So a pretty decent sentence for this type of case. I think other judges probably would have let him off with maybe two to three months behind bars, if that. You know, but Lamberth was burned early. You guys might remember. He tried to show some compassion for a January 6th defendant. He gave her probation only because she feigned remorse. And then it was either that night or the next night she went on Fox News and tried to downplay everything that happened that day and minimize her actions. So the ink wasn't even dry on the judge's orders. And she was on national television making him look like a fool. So he learned his lesson very quickly. 
Anyway, I will let you know if I hear any more. Thank you all so much for watching and listening. Please like this video, share it with everyone you know, become a subscriber if you have not. If you can donate, really appreciate it. Love you all. Take care. Talk with you soon.